This is the Grind It Podcast. We know just like grinding a handrail or across the coping can be challenging at times, so can life be. We share God's word and personal stories to encourage you to keep grinding and to not give up. It's time to grind. So here's the old school skateboarder himself, Randall Tucker. Um, but at one point, James won, uh memorized the entire chapter. Sweet. Uh, so when she when she mentioned, he started quoting. I was I was like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> Let me tell you how it goes. Um, of course, I'm not. I couldn't recite it now, but uh, definitely this. Uh, like two through five, that's that's something that always stuck with me, and uh, it is something that I've always remembered. Just to consider it all joy when you encounter various trials and and, and so on, because uh, it's it's so much different than yeah, and especially than, when you put it in context mm-hmm. and knowing what these people were going through, and he's telling them to be full of joy. And I'm like, how do you do that? You're watching your loved ones get beaten, tortured, and you're supposed to be full of joy. Like it's a choice. Yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah like exactly. Yeah. And I'm like, how do you do that? Well, a couple examples that I thought about, and there's a whole lot more. But Peter and John in Acts chapter 5, verse 40 and 41, they're before the Sanhedrin, and they get flogged. Right? They've been told to quit preaching and teaching in the name mm-hmm. of Jesus. They go right back to the temple. Yeah. Name. Yeah. They go right back to the temple and do it again. And they're like, how is this happening? And so they, they get flogged, right? And it says in verse 41, the apostles left that day, Peter and John. Rejoicing. They left, yeah, they left the high council rejoicing. Yeah. Which is, when you read the book of Philippians, I, can't, I think it's used like 17 times. Rejoicing, mm-hmm. joy, it's mm-hmm. the same word. Pretty much the same word. But they left rejoicing. They were full of joy that God had counted them worthy to suffer mm-hmm. disgrace for the name of Jesus. That's crazy. Counted That's crazy. Joy, they just got yeah. the crap beat out of them. Flop, sha, flesh. I mean, that's like right before Jesus went to the cross and mm-hmm. stuff. Flesh being ripped off their back, which means they would have scars later. And they they, they rejoiced over that. Uh, and then Hebrews twelve one through three uh, it talks about Jesus. Therefore, since we're surrounded by such a huge crowd of witnesses, talking about the, all those people listed in Hebrews eleven. Um, to the life of faith let us strip off every weight that slows us down especially the sin that so easily trips us up and let us run with endurance the race that we'll come back to that word here in a little bit the race that God has set before us we do this by keeping our eyes on Jesus the champion who initiates and perfects our faith because of the joy awaiting him there's our word because of the joy awaiting him he endured the cross disregarding his shame and now he's seated at the place of honor beside God's throne Think of all the hostility he endured from sinful people. Then you won't become weary and give up. But when you think about what the cross is, all the I mean, Isaiah says, we talked about this a few podcasts ago, Isaiah says in chapter 52 that he was beaten so bad you wouldn't even recognize that he was a man. So how does that bring him joy? Because when he's in the Garden of Gethsemane, Luke says that he's, his sweat became drops of blood. He's in such agony. That's not right. joyful. Right. But well, yet the Hebrew author says it brought him joy. Why? Well, I, I think the lament, obviously, and we, we talked about this, um, that was because of his separation from the Father. And never having had experienced that before, he was looking at that like, okay, this is really hard. But for the joy set before me, and that is the joy of us having communion mm-hmm. with him. Mm-hmm. Knowing the result of his suffering. Yeah. yeah. May the lamb receive the reward of his suffering. That's that's us. That's yeah. us coming into fellowship and communion with him. Yeah. So we're to mirror his his attitude, I guess, about right. suffering, um, resulting in ultimate good, which not so hard. Right. right. But and then also like his death brought life. It's through the the ick that brought me back mm-hmm. to life. <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, yeah, we said that this morning. Um, so yeah, I mean, I think what brought him joy is the end result. He he, I don't think he 
was joyful about what he's about to go through because he's, yeah. t- he's telling the father, hey, let this cup pass from me. Is there any other way yeah. we can do this? And like, God's like, no, oh, silence. He heard crickets, right? But he had us on his mind. He knew this was the only way. He was our Passover lamb. Mm-hmm. He had to die for the sins, our sins, right? So that we can have forgiveness of sins. And that mm-hmm. brought him joy to do so. Mm-hmm. Not the suffering that he was going through, but the end result. Right. And when we think about heaven, when we think about you know, when you do face these, like if you're being tortured, and if it does cost your life, you know if it, that's not the end. Right. That you know, there's eternity with Jesus, with the Father, with the Holy Spirit. Wait, to be wait. absent from the body is present with the Lord. Yeah, right. and that should bring joy. Oh, let's see, where do I want to go from here? For time's sake. Um, these Jewish Christians are literally wondering if they're going to live day by day, uh, having to watch over their shoulders because they followed Jesus, the Messiah. Because it was blasphemous to even mention the name of Jesus, right? Some have lost everything. They've lost loved ones. Um, they're being tortured, killed, and they're supposed to have the joy in the midst of that. Not only are they supposed to have joy in the midst of the persecution, but they're supposed to be the leaders as they suffer. Mm-hmm. So what do we do when trouble comes? That we leaders full of joy. Right. Lead by example. Yeah, lead by example. We've said that a few times in the last few weeks, right? Lead by example. <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, I'm surprised Pastor didn't say it this morning in the sermon, but First Corinthians 11, 1, Paul says, Imitate me as I imitate Christ. Right. Follow me as I follow Christ, right? Yeah, and so the biggest question it really in the podcast today is, you know, who, who do people see when they see me? Do they see Jesus? Because mm-hmm. we say all the time we're the hands and the feet of Jesus, but are we? Right. Like, like Pastor said this morning about that, he he's talking about this in Jesus, dude. But he was talking about how this guy just quoting Bible verses after Bible verses, and then literally turned right around and just went off on his kids. That's who he was talking about. And and he's like, really, dude? Yeah. You just quoted the a bunch fruit? of Bible verses. Yeah, we're yeah. the fruit of your yeah. So. so for you know that when your faith is tested, your endurance has a chance to grow. So let it grow. For when your endurance is fully developed, you will, you will be perfect and complete, needing nothing. So James says, when your faith is tested, which means it's going to be tested. It, it's going to happen. It, 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 people think, you know, why is all this bad stuff happening to me? Why, you know, why is God let, letting this happen to me? Right, he told you right here. It's gonna happen, and the, and one of the reasons why it does happen, this, these troubles, these hard times, is because your faith is being tested. Why is your faith tested? Because you're having an opportunity for your endurance to grow. So when your faith is tested, it's gonna happen. Be prepared. Get ready. Expect it. Don't get mad at God. Don't run from God. Don't blame God. It's just keep going. Go with the flow. I, I was taught years ago just like that faith is like a muscle, right? And if you want your muscles to grow, you have to have um, resistance, right? Yeah, they break down um, the muscles. Right. You have to have resistance. So you add extra weight if you're bodybuilding, right? If you want to bulk up and add add muscle, you got to add extra weight. If you just keep doing the same weight, you're not going to add muscle, your, your faith is not going to continue to grow if you don't have trials to believe the Lord through. Right. Right? If we never have any difficulties in life, then we don't have mm-hmm. to really lean into God for anything. <laughs> yeah. I think that it's hard to think about um, our cultural pursuits of security and stability and comfort. Um mm-hmm as a mainly American or Western um, pursuit, or not for everyone, like, no. but um, that, that can actually be a very huge obstacle to, um, not that we shouldn't want nice things or want um, stability for our families. Like those aren't bad things, but um, considering that that can be an obstacle to growing and mm-hmm. experiencing what a What is it that Ben Stewart says? 
I'm sorry to have wasn't that Ben Stewart that said that you were quoting you were saying it today oh no it was a Todd White sermon Todd White. just like it's okay for us to have stuff but it's not okay oh. for stuff to have us <laughs> yeah 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 but yeah if we never experience any kind of resistance then we won't grow um I, I've heard of um foliage growing inside of a biodome and if that biodome doesn't have wind, then the root system does not develop on those plants. Really? Yes. And then once wind hit it, hits it, they just fall over because they haven't had to endure the pressing of that wind. Mm. Um, but you think of like trees and things that are that are uh, that grow up along a coastline where you're they're constantly yeah. being battered by wind from storms that are coming up rolling in off the ocean those suckers are strong they got to send down deep roots if they want to stay upright right you know um, and and we have to do the same thing we have to dig deep to find our, our sustenance in the Lord in those times when we are being tested, when we are enduring suffering or difficulties. Yeah, but don't we, don't, just people in general, especially in the United States, but don't we try to do everything we can to avoid pain and discomfort? Yeah. I mean, we <laughs> buy our way out of it or, yes, you know, whatever. Yes, we do. We, we like our comfort. Southern comfort. Yeah, so comfort. Mm -hmm. Wait, that's an alcohol drink, isn't it? (laughs) (laughs) Culturally, just comfort, comfort. just comfort in general, (laughs) right? We do. I mean, that's why I say we we are so spoiled because so much of the world lives on less than two dollars a day. You know, yet we are so rich in comparison. Um, In in lots of areas in India and uh, across the globe, people are still being physically harmed, maimed, dismembered, um, murdered for their faith in Christ. And we don't experience nearly that kind right. of trouble or persecution. But we go out of our way to make sure we don't. Mm-hmm. I mean, not just that, persecution, but just anything. We don't want any kind of discomfort. I mean, we have pills for everything. <laughs> Sinuses. <laughs> You know, oh, my elbow hurts. Let me, you know, take some ibuprofen or, uh, you know, pain pill or, you know, whatever. We'll do, we do everything we can to mask discomfort. Mm-hmm. So what does it look like then, uh, you know, just broad question, as it, um, living in a culture of comfort, like how, and I don't know, like how do we embody something about suffering when we will never counter this kind of suffering? And to your point, like context is important and we're not gonna ever be where they were but that's a hard question because not there are some people that sell all their stuff and they go live with the homeless and they get down and dirty and but not everyone is called to do that um we have occupations and we can be a light in those areas but it's a hard um it, there's a huge gap, I guess, between we're, and and that pendulum swings both ways, right? I mean, we're we're on the we like the comfort side. We're not necessarily dying for our faith here in America at this point, but that may change at some point in the future, right? I mean, Book of Revelation, we just went through it in church, and there's some um, unsettling bits of what what is going to happen in the future, but um, that's not where we're at now. Yet in church history, there was a time when monks or people who had given themselves um, over to the Lord would physically beat themselves so they could experience hmm. suffering yes. and pain, which seems like yeah. so the other side of the <laughs> pendulum, like that doesn't even make sense either. Um, right? Asceticism, like, I think asc- is what it's called. Yeah, yeah like yeah. a harsh... Um, Right, that that yeah, that I'm I'm doing something good for myself spiritually by being hard on my physical body. Um, well, I'm not sure what that's doing. Yeah. But well, I guess the heart of fasting is is a mild version of of that, like um, right, like discipline um, mm-hmm. as a voluntary suffering, perhaps. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, and maybe that's how we connect physically with this concept. Um, I'm well, sure. when we first started, I was talking about how we can take, because uh, that, that's really the whole reason why I'm bringing all this out in detail like this, is because 
they're suffering persecution and dying. We're not. We're sitting in air conditioned buildings and heated buildings, padded pews. So what, how do we? How do we? How do we figure all this out and make it apply to our lives? Well, we got We can take the the principles from it and apply. It. He says troubles of any kind. Okay, so I'll, I'll give you a little insight into to my life. So I was married for 28 years before marrying, and I was a full time pastor. And my ex wife had affairs, and I fell into a very bad depression. Very, very bad. I just had a back surgery, wound up having three. So I was on pain pills because of the back surgeries. And and then when I found out, so I'm laid up for seven months, I had to use a, a, a walker and a cane and a wheelchair for seven months. And that's why I had to have another surgery after that. So I, like I said, I had a total of three. So I'm laid up on a couch, had to basically crawl to the bathroom I find I discover she's having an affair with an old boyfriend, and I was preaching full time at the time, and so I went nuts. This bad depression. I had I was on the pain pills, started drinking with the pain pills, alcohol, and uh, got all these tattoos because, it, it, like I said, fighting depression. So to me, that that was trouble. And suffering, difficulty. And I mean, I, I literally went crazy. I, I had I went through a lot of counseling and a psychiatrist uh, to to get through it, and and lived in my garage for twelve years, trying to make it work. And one night, when uh, I was like, I got to, I've got to go a different direction, or I'm going to be dead. Because my doctor told me, he said, I'm surprised you even have a liver. I'm, I don't, he said, I don't even know how you're alive. And so I was packing up my stuff and I, I came across a bottle of alcohol I didn't know I had and I drank it and it wasn't much it was, it was like it was a half of a half pint but for some reason I passed out and I fell on my on my concrete floor in my garage and broke my nose had a concussion my teeth went through my lip and it was it's just so embarrassing <laughs> and um so I was like, I, I've got to do something different. I'm, I'm going to end up dead. So I went in a totally different direction and went and talked to my elders at, at, at the church I was at at the time. And But for years and years, people were telling me to get a divorce, get, a, get out of that situation. But I, it wasn't that easy for me because, first of all, I loved Jesus and, and I wanted everything to try to work out, right? So I was doing everything I could to, for the, in those, that long period of time to make sure I tried everything. And it just wasn't working out. And there's it goes the story even goes a whole lot deeper than that. But I, I don't want to. I don't want to. Um, what do you call it? I don't want to talk about her. You know, degrade her. And um, I'm sure some things that other people won't ever see. And though we're, you're not, you are not necessarily being persecuted for your faith, like these people were. Um, it was certainly painful and and difficult to endure all of that. And I'm sure that your first um, reaction was not like, "Oh, let me be joyful. No. Let me <laughs> let me count this all joy, brothers." When I face difficulties, I like it But anyway. It's embarrassing to talk about, but it brings out the point, the, what you asked. That's the reason why I didn't bring it up. So the, the point of me saying all that is our trouble is still trouble. And he says troubles of any kind. And so, I like you just said, um, when I was going through all that, it was not joyful at all. And nor did I show joy. You know, I, I ran her in the ground. The people, it's very simple on my part. Just turned to stuff that I should have never even turned to and just did just ungodly things. It was not Christ like stuff. And and so maybe I should have read James and, and been convicted. <laughs> 
and, you know, and showed joy because I sure wasn't showing Jesus very, very well. Um, but yeah, our we my that's my whole point. When I told you I'm 51, I, and I, I I know I know what trouble is. Other you know people have they can fill in their stories. Everybody has a story, and as you get older, I mean y'all have a story now. But as you get older, you, you you add chapters to that story, and hopefully you'll you'll never ever have to go through anything like what I did. It it, I, it it's awful. It's awful. I'll just leave it at that. But I I could have handled it better. I could have handled my kids better during that time, and. You know, and I, I should have shown Jesus. I, I, I'll just say I, I was not an, an example of Jesus. And I was I was preaching. I was standing in a pulpit. And I was drunk half the time or high on pain pills because of that, I was in that depression. And that I, and I, cause I just wound up stepping down. I said, this, this ain't right. So I'm not doing this anymore. I can't do this. It's not, it's not, it's not right. And the church I was at was trying to fire me. And so I just stepped down, and and I literally went over to one of the elders' house, and I said, "Do you know what's going on?" He's like, "What are you talking about?" And so I told him the story. He's like, "We had no idea." I said, "You're right, because you never asked. You knew I was suffering, but you never asked why." And um, not not to run them down or anything, but my my whole point is that we go through different trials and tribulations, and we are to be examples of Jesus. Mm-hmm. And, and, and when hard times come, however you want to word that, life trials, persecution, anything, it, you know, that, that, that takes you out of the rhythm of life and, and gives that resistance that you were talking about, it, it does not bring joy. So how do you? How, how how do you count it all joy? You know, how how do you endure? How because because Jesus says in Matthew twenty four nine through thirteen, he says um, you're going to be arrested, you're going to be persecuted, you're going to be killed. Oh great, I'll sign up for that. You know, <laughs> here am I, Lord, send me. <laughs> yeah, and he says you're going to be hated all over the world. Hey, sign me up because you're my followers. And then he says many will turn away from me and betray. And hate each other. And many false prophets will appear and deceive many people. But sin will be rampant everywhere. And the love of many will go cold. But the one who endures to the end will be saved. Mm-hmm. There's that word, endure. And the good news about the kingdom will be preached throughout the whole world. So that all nations will hear it. And then the end will come. So, I mean, I, I don't know. What do you think? How, how do you... Well, say, think, so how do you have Sadie joy it, in the midst of this Sadie storm? Sadie said it earlier. It's, it's, it's a choice. You know, you have to choose to rejoice. You have to choose to be joyful. And um, I know you mentioned this to me the other day, right? Like, um, he works all things together for good for those who love him and are called according well, to his But when you're going purpose. through that stuff... It, I know. Th- it's th- hard. You want to punch people who say that. You literally do. You want to punch them. Because oh, yeah. people yeah. come yeah. through all the... I'm uh-huh. telling you, when you're going through something very difficult, because you've been there too. You've, yeah. walked, you've walked a hard road too. And people start throwing these Bible... Give it to God. Give it to God. And you're like, I'm going to give you something. And shut <laughs> your face. You know? Lay holy yeah. hands on each other. Yeah. Yeah. It's, 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 yeah, Shelby's got yeah. something. It, it's not easy, is what I'm saying. Okay. What do you want to say? No, I thought I'm a reverse in first. Do I need to punch you in the I, face? Can you come through? No. <laughs> no. It says, for everyone born of God overcomes the world. This is the victory that has overcome the world, even our faith. Who is it that overcomes the world? The world only the one who believes that Jesus is the Son of God. Right. We are releasing the sound. All you Grinded Podcast listeners, I know you enjoy some good music, but I want to tell you about some awesome music. Now, my friend, Mary Gamboa, she's also the worship leader at the church where I worship, called Authentic Church here in Alcoa, Tennessee. We'd love to invite you to come out and check us out sometime when you get a chance. Start at 10 a.m. And we're on Lindsay Street here in Alcoa. Mary has produced a new album called Jealous. And you can check that out anywhere music is being streamed. 
But you can also check it out at marygamboamusic.com. That's Mary G A M B O A music.com. Go check that out. So, so basically, then it goes back to Hebrews twelve one through three. Because when when what happens when when Peter walked out of the boat and was walking on the water, he had his eyes on Jesus. He was fixed on Jesus, but then he got his eyes on the winds and the way. When troubles come, especially if you get persecuted for your faith, it's easy to take your eyes off Jesus. Right. But what did Stephen do, even as he was being stoned to death? Oh, good point. You know, I mean, literally, people are throwing rocks at him until he dies from it. Yet he looks up and he sees Jesus standing at at the right hand of the Father. Yeah. And he says, "Forgive them." You know, I mean, much like echoing Jesus's words, "Forgive them, Father. They know not what they do." Um, and and so keeping his eyes fixed on that. On that joy set before him, he endured the stoning and died. And to be absent from that physical body was to be present with the Lord. Mm. Um, so the there, end result. Right. I mean, there is a, a place even in the hard times where you have to go, okay, Lord, I don't understand how, but I know that you're going to work this together for good. Whether it's for me or whether it's for Caleb sitting next to me or somebody else who's going to benefit from the the wisdom and the endurance and the, the patience and even the frustrations. You know, somebody else is going to glean from this at some point. I don't understand it now. I don't see the fruit of that yet. But, but I know that what you promised, you'll do. He who promised is faithful. And that's where, you know, keeping our eyes fixed on him as the author and perfecter of our faith. Okay, Lord, I don't feel this right now, but I know your word says this. Mm-hmm. And I know you're not going to you're not going to go back on your word. But when you're going through it, that's it's just not easy to do. It is. It's it, what we've got I mean, to do. It's the choice right. that I mean, we got to make. It's not but easy. But we don't to always do. make that choice. And and that's part of why we need to live in community. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right? Because iron sharpens iron. Yeah. We we sharpen the countenance of our friend when um you know, a one can put a thousand to flight, but two ten thousand. When we are together, when we are unified, when we are helping each other out, then then we can remind one another. Yeah. You know. And to your point about like, oh, just read your Bible, or you know, people that are spouting verses when someone's mm-hmm. like grieving a loss or going through unimaginable pain. Like, I do think culturally, like there's kind of a boundary where there's a church comfort like we love jesus life is good and we're not we're not gonna think about suffering or maybe we'll talk about it loosely like we can get through it we have god you know very vague but then there's when the rubber meets the road like life really sucks sometimes and Mm -hmm. there's i feel like that just conversationally with other believers sometimes there might be like a just a hurdle before it really gets real and we say, hey, like, I, I'm not seeing a way out of this. And we talk about this a lot. Like, okay, can we get real? Like, really get real. Not these little anecdotes. Like, using the Bible as an anecdotal yeah. um, kind of uh, pain pill, maybe. Mm-hmm. Um, so I think like, there's a friction there. You can definitely tell the difference between, like, if you're, if you're going through something that's really hard and you're sharing it with with somebody uh, maybe you share something with two different people at two different times and one of them's been through a little bit before and the other hasn't you can definitely tell by the way that they choose to uh, choose to be a friend and uh, how they might go about trying to be helpful uh, like Job's friends <laughs> <laughs> truly you said <laughs> <laughs> the rock. what have you well, done Job the body <laughs> suffers together right and right. it's the point that we're we're to be unified and um, 
Rejoice with those, those who rejoice right, and weep with those, those who weep, weep and, and rejoice with those who I'll sing, I'll sing, When you were talking about I was singing the Jesus Culture song because uh, I was listening to it today on the way home from work. Uh, uh, love never fails. There may be joy in the night. No, there, there may be pain, pain in the night. night. The joy comes mm-hmm. in the morning. <laughs> but you know, like, uh, you know, when I, when I was going through all that stuff, you know, I've known her. You talk about you've known her for a long time. I've known her for ever since she's moved here. And I used to play with her and her ex-husband. I played drums with them, and travel around with them a little bit. And I never dreamed in a million years I'd be, I'd be married to her. You know, but if I would have known that back then, it would have been a cakewalk to go through that stuff. It wouldn't have bothered me. But you know, we don't we don't know. God knows from beginning to end. Nothing surprises God, and that's why it's so important that we we trust Him. And walk by faith, and endure. And which we'll come back to this word "endure" here because it's so it's, it's critical. When you're going through trouble, and, and you're supposed to be full of joy because you, you want to endure, you want to be the example. But if, if I would have known the end result, if I known I was going to be sitting here at this kitchen table beside this woman, I'd have, I'd have, I'd just ease right through it. But you know, yeah. because she's such a blessing, it's just oh, she's so awesome. But I didn't know that, so you know. It it, it, it it was I don't want anybody to suffer right in any kind of way but James says when it comes right it's gonna happen something is gonna you know, some kind of hardship something some kind of life challenge no matter how hard we try to avoid it it's gonna happen mm. and how do we act or react when it does happen praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ the Father of compassion and the God of all comfort who comforts us in all our troubles so that we can comfort those in any trouble with the comfort we ourselves receive from God. You know, I I got flowers with that scripture on it from a good friend of mine who um, I'm still in touch with um, when I had miscarriage on the first pregnancy. And... I had to go look it up and look at the context and and just go, okay, Lord. And having been blessed by how she reached out to me in in comfort at a time when I was just grieving a a loss, um, I've passed that on to many other people in in their grief. Um, And it may or may not mean anything at that moment. But just like you were saying, you can tell the people who have been through some stuff, they have a little more compassion, a little more, <laughs> maybe a little better listening ear, you know, having gone through some things. But the same comfort that we receive, we're also supposed to give. Yeah. So. I use that verse a lot in funerals when I was mm-hmm. preaching full time. Mm-hmm. All right, so come back. Let's come back to this word endure for a minute because it, it's really, it's really critical because when a lot of times when when something heavy and hard comes in somebody's life they 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 stop they they blame god they get mad at god and they're gone Mm -hmm. they disappear and that's not enduring the the word endure means that you you, this is my definition you're going along something comes along that brings resistance Mm -hmm. i had that in my notes before you ever said it like when you're lifting weights and you got the resistance right right the word endure means that you're going along, you're living life, something knocks you out of your rhythm, it brings resistance, but you keep going. And that's the key. You got to keep going with Jesus, who is the real key. Mm-hmm. Webster's uh, definition says for to endure means to suffer something painful or difficult patiently. And that's, that, that's hard, being patient when you're going through something difficult. Um, the Greek word for endure is hupomone. Hupom- Something like that. And it means uh, the characteristic of a man who is not swerved from his deliberate purpose and his loyalty to faith and piety by even the greatest trials and sufferings. So when these trials, these hard times, these troubles, as James says, they come our way, but instead of giving up, we keep going. And Jesus promises that if we keep going, if we endure to the end, he says in Matthew, that we'll be saved. That's why the Hebrew author says, let us hold fast without wavering. Mm -hmm. And he's talking to persecuted Christians who were going back into Judaism. He says, let us hold fast without wavering. And that that word literally means, can I borrow your Bible just for a second? 
it, it, it literally means to grip so tight that you can't let go. You can't pull it. Nothing can pull it out of your hand. Hold fast. Hold tightly. To who? Jesus. Mm -hmm. when, when trouble comes. And I, I used the, 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 I thought of the song uh, by Josh Ball and Stand in Your Love. And the lyric says, when, the darkness, when darkness tries to roll over my bones, and when sorrow comes to steal the joy I own, when brokenness and pain is all I know, I won't be shaken. No, I won't be shaken. And so when trouble comes, then we have an opportunity to lead people by our example. Lord, forgive me, because you didn't want to follow my example when I was going through my troubles. Mm -hmm. I, would have, I would have led you to the pits of hell, I guarantee you. But um, when trouble comes, we have an opportunity to lead people by our example, showing joy during the hard time, trusting God through it all, so our endurance has a chance to grow. Flip that coin. Because that also means that there's a chance that our endurance won't grow. We actually have a choice. What you said earlier, it's a choice. For you know that when your faith is tested, your endurance has a chance to grow. Verse four says, and I get this. See, you didn't know, you didn't know you were, you didn't read my, well, I did send you my notes, didn't I? I may have skipped it. <laughs> <laughs> but you probably didn't read that part. <laughs> but he says in verse four, so let it grow. Let it grow. For when your endurance is fully developed, you will be perfect and complete, needing nothing. You know who doesn't have a need for anything? Jesus. Yeah, well, of course. <laughs> but also the person who loves Jesus, lives for Jesus, and whose faith has been tried and tested. And despite everything that they've gone through, they endured, they kept going, and now they're on the other side. What's the Bible say? Well, you can look at my neck. I have a, a, a tattoo on my neck. It says Uchi. It come, I, I, I was a Hispanic studies major at UT. And so the Mayan culture was the early Spaniards. And they had temples. Well, in one of their temples, this tattoo on my neck came out of one of their temples. And Uchi means it'll come to pass. And over and over again, the Bible says it'll come to pass. Storms, didn't, storms will come, but storms don't come to stay. They come to pass. Mm -hmm. Right? So... People who endure, they, 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 they've gotten through the other side of the storm, and now they've endured that storm. They, they stood, well, they said, the test of time, if you will. And they know, they, they well, I can speak for myself. Like when Jesus says, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. I know that mm -hmm. now because he's proved it to me. And people, like you said a while ago, who, who, you know, those people who have been through some stuff, they know. And you can tell that they know. If you've never really been through anything, nah. You, you spat Bible verses all day long. It's just coming out of your head. Mm -hmm. But until you experience it for yourself, it, it, it's totally different. It's totally different. Mm -hmm. So my encouragement to you is to talk to people who've been through the fire. Listen to their story. And then you'll be encouraged to not give up, but to keep going. Can I read my verse 3 and verse 4? This is Passion Church. What, what version are you reading? He's, he said he's the same, same as the NIV. Okay, NIV. Yeah, and, and yeah. generally I'm reading the NIV as well. Um, but this one as the Passion Translation. For you know that when your faith is tested, it stirs up power within you to endure all things. And then, as your endurance grows even stronger, it will release perfection into every part of your being until there is nothing missing and nothing lacking. It's like a sanctification kind of yeah. language. Yeah. yeah. Like, as, as that is tested, it grows and, and releases perfection. That's, that's pretty crazy. Um, but as you were talking, it reminded me of, it is well, right? Though Satan and should bluff it, though trial should come, let this blessed assurance control that Christ has regarded my helpless estate and has shed his own blood for my soul. I mean, and if you know the, the story of how that, mm -hmm. that hymn was written and the depth of the pain and loss that the man was going through, um, as he wrote it, it's 
it's pretty astounding that that has that has been a hymn that has endured in the church for several hundred years. It's mm-hmm. good one too. Um, even even through the midst of pain, God can God can produce that endurance in us that then helps comfort others. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You have anything to add? This is it. Speak now forever. Hold your peace. Forever. Amen. <laughs> you think, any thoughts? Those thoughts? Um, just thinking about James as a whole, like, I remember what you said about um, James packs a punch, and it's about what does it mean to really live a true life embodying Jesus' teaching, and him opening with suffering is just an interesting framework for thinking about how to be a sincere um, true follower and mm-hmm. maybe suffering is a criteria for that mm-hmm. and just broadly thinking about yeah I, I think a lot of times as believers in the West we think that well if we're following God if we're doing what we're supposed to be doing for the kingdom that we're not going to have any trouble right or if we do, it's just the devil giving us some, <laughs> giving us some, some difficulties to, to hurdle. Um, and not to take anything from that, but Jesus said, we will have trials, right? But take heart, I have overcome the world, mm-hmm. right? That there, there will be trouble in our lives. There will be difficulties. There will be persecution. There will be um, hard times. Just live long enough and it's going to happen, <laughs> right? Um, regardless of the culture. But, um, but that we get to take heart because he has overcome the world. And that's where we have to have our hope and our identification in his victory. Yeah, mm-hmm. good stuff. You want to pray when we do Sure. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord, for your word. Um, the Holy Spirit remind us when we go through those difficult times, when we go through troubles, when we face persecution, may we choose joy, knowing that you are working something on the inside of us, that then we'll be able to give and impart comfort others with later on. Forgive us for when we have not exemplified joy, when we've not led out um, and considered as we should. Um, But thank you that you are truly working all things together for good, for those who love you and are called according to your purpose. We praise you for it. Give us strength in the days ahead. Let us truly exemplify Christ in everything that we do and say. We ask it in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Keep grinding. Thanks for listening to the Grounded Podcast. If we could pray for you or encourage you in any way, please email us at thegroundedpodcast at gmail.com or you can text us at 865 418 2824. If you're watching on YouTube, please click like and subscribe and you'll be notified about new episodes. If you're listening on an app, leave us a five star review, but most importantly, share the Grounded Podcast with a friend. God bless you and remember, keep grinding.